Welcome back to Logan Rano Aquascaping. My name is Logan and today I have a full studio tour for you guys of all the aquariums I currently have set up in my space. And at the date of this recording, which is in March, 2023, I have four different tanks set up, all different sizes. So I'm excited to walk you through how everything is doing, the visions for the future of the studio, what I can do better and what the ultimate vision is. So without further ado, let's get started with the oldest tank and we'll work our way up to the newest. Okay, so I'm actually a little bit embarrassed to show this tank just because it has been neglected in terms of trimming and algae control. I'm still doing regular water changes on it, but my UNS 60U is the oldest tank in my studio. And I set this up way back in September of 2021. This was the first tank that really got my channel started. And I have a lot of love for this tank because it's undergone a lot of different changes. And it really taught me a lot. That said, pretty much since its inception, it has struggled with a BBA outbreak. I used infected plants from my old home in New York. So I kind of knew what I was getting into. I thought I'd be able to keep it under control. But with BBA, once you kind of lay back on the heavy treatment, it can really take over. And that's exactly what's happened in this tank. However, the plants seem to be doing just fine. The BBA is primarily infesting the moss and the hardscape, but most of the plant leaves, while still having a little bit of BBA on them, remain relatively unharmed. And while it's not necessarily necessarily up to the quality that I like to maintain in my studio. I am getting ready to do a massive rescape on this. I've got some really exciting equipment coming in, a brand new stand that'll match the other stands in my studio. And I'm gonna be for the first time doing suspended lighting. So I'm really excited to get that project moving. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments would be a cool replacement scape in here. I am gonna keep the livestock. Currently I've got Ember Tetras and Guppies in here, but I'm pretty much open to doing anything. I'm probably probably just gonna have to source some new hardscape. So let me know your thoughts. And I'm really excited to set up something new in this tank for spring of this year. So the next oldest tank in my studio is my UNS 5N. And this tank has also gone through some pretty big changes. I did a massive rescaping on it in the autumn and I'm really happy where it's at. Other than the background, when I planted this tank with different Eleocaris species, I thought I was planting a taller Eleocaris in the back and I believe I mixed up the species and planted something small. So what I wanna do is purchase a taller species from Boost Plant and replace that because I think once the back Background is really grown in and lush and maybe kind of curving over itself. It'll add to that sort of zen element, really balance out the composition because you never want big empty holes in your aquascape unless they're meant to be focal points. And that's not the case with this tank. But I'm really in love with this tank. It's right next to my desk. It's right next to my workspace. So whenever I'm practicing guitar, I kind of sit in front of it, you know, play for the fish a little bit. I feel like they really appreciate it. And this tank has also dealt with some serious BBA, mostly because I use some of those in infested plants from New York, but I've really been able to keep it under control. And I have to say that hydrogen peroxide and regular scrubbing of the dragon wood has been key for me. The plants are primarily unharmed. It's mostly just the wood and I've managed to keep the wood fairly clean for the most part. I think once I get some new Eleocaris in this tank to really fill out the background, I'll give this scape a few more months and then it'll be time to do something new and different. So let me know your thoughts. Okay, and moving on to the third oldest tank tank in the gallery, I have my beautiful Seriustone Iwagumi. And this is a really, really fun tank to keep. It's so easy to maintain. Iwagumis can be very simple depending on the plants you pick. I'm keeping my Cranthema Monte Carlo as well as Hemianthus Calicotroids Cuba in here. The plants grow at a moderate rate, so it's not like Rotales where you really have to trim every single week. Every few weeks, every month or so, I give this tank a trimming. I just gave it a trimming about two weeks ago, but most of the maintenance involves just kind of scrubbing the rocks. Right now it's dealing with a little bit of green algae, you know, nothing to get scared about. But anytime I see a little bit, I try and get pretty proactive with the maintenance because usually it can get much worse if left untreated. But I'm just loving this tank. It's low maintenance and it's exactly what I envisioned when I set it up. And it adds such an element of zen to my studio. The livestock in this tank are my absolute favorite. These were a recommendation from the guys over at Green Aqua. They are the Sundadanio Goblin 
Arcturus, which the common name is the Neon Blue Resbora, and I'm just in love with them. They're so confident. A lot of times with schooling fish, I worry like, oh, are they gonna be hiding the whole time? Are they gonna be super nervous every time I walk by the tank? But they are just voracious feeders. I think because there's so many of them, I purchased 30, which I really over filtered this tank. I've got a pretty massive filter on it, so it's totally cool. But I highly advise when you're purchasing schooling fish to try and defy those minimums. A lot of times at stores, they'll tell you, oh, get six. But really, that's just like the bare minimum if you absolutely had to purchase that fish. Six would just barely cut it. But you know, you got to remember in nature, these fish exist in schools of hundreds, if not thousands. So getting something like six just doesn't quite cut it. Whereas 30 is a lot better. And in this tank, without any natural predators, they're just thriving. So I'm loving this tank. I'm excited to see it develop. I'm excited to see the hair grass grow out a little bit more. So we'll get more distinctive focal points. I'm also excited to add some shrimp in the near future. I've just been putting it off because I have so many purchases to make for all my aquascapes. If I had unlimited funds, I'd be, you know, probably spending a few thousand dollars every week, but that's not the reality. So you gotta pick and choose and sort of prioritize certain projects when you have the resources. And finally, the newest tank in my gallery is a tank that has only been flooded for about three weeks. And this is my UNS3N, and it is also an Iwagumi composed of the beautiful mountain stone, which is just so detailed. It's great for a little nanoscape like this because there's so much fine texture. It's really nice for establishing scale. And then it's planted with just two cups of Macranthum Monte Carlo that that I did a dry start on. I just kind of sprinkled everything in, pushed it into the soil, and it's really thriving. So it's going through a little bit of an algae phase right now. Again, nothing too visible, but I'm noticing the stones are starting to get a little bit of algae. So rather than panic, I usually look at that as a good sign because it means that life is really establishing in your filter, in your tank, and things are well on their way to becoming an established ecosystem. So I'll just proactively treat that with a little bit of maintenance, as well as a new product that I'm using from boost plant. This is an algae control bottle. So I'm kind of testing this out, seeing what types of results I get. And as always with any sort of algae control, you just want to make sure you explicitly follow any dosing instructions. So if you're curious about checking this out for yourself, I've got a link down below in the video description. I'll let you guys know what I think of it after a few weeks. So that sums up the gallery tour of my studio as of March 2023. This studio is still many, many leagues away from what I ultimately envision for it, but it it has made so much progress from when I first set it up way back in September of 2021. I just moved to Oregon, drove here from New York State, and I didn't even know I was gonna start a YouTube channel. I got super inspired watching another YouTuber, not even an aquarium YouTuber, a music YouTuber, and I was like, yep, that's something I'm gonna do. So right now it's in a state that honestly, when I first got into this hobby seven years ago, I never could have dreamed of, but I wanna make it even more beautiful, even more zen-like and more cohesive. And I think the projects I'm gonna be working on in the future are gonna get us closer to that goal. So I really gotta thank you guys and gals for your support. I don't do this for the views, I don't do this for the subs, but it certainly helps reinforce that I'm doing something right with this channel. So let me know down below in the comments what your favorite scape is in my studio. And also let me know if there's something you'd like me to create that I don't already have in the studio because I really value your input. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys and gals next time.